Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, in this video, well, um, due to current events, like what happened, you know, here in this goofy ass city that I currently live in, I was going to, uh, I was going to make a video about what had happened and basically rant on um, this goofy ass city known as Denver, Colorado. And you know, I know, um, you know, crime is everywhere. I am fully aware of that. It's just, it's just the way things went down that, you know, had me tripping. But uh, I'm going to hold off on that because, um, you know, there, there's so much going on, like, you know, I see, um, you know, goofy shit like John Morant getting suspended from the Grizzlies for doing the same exact shit they got him suspended the last time. Um, that's, that's another video for another time as well. But, um, I think what I'm gonna do is this, um, video on this, um, Chicago police officer, this female police officer out of Chicago, whose name is, uh, I believe, Ariana Preston, who was, uh, murdered by some goons. And from what I'm gathering, from what I'm gathering, she was pretty much ambushed. I don't know the full details of the story. I don't think the full details are necessary. I mean, all I know is she rolled up at the scene, whatever the scene was, and um, not only did Pookie and Ray Ray make her drop it off, as in drop her gun, they um. They murdered her execution style. I've heard they like shot her in the neck and shot her in the face. And I left a comment on uh, Sean James' channel who talked about it, uh, referencing what um, Clint Eastwood's character of Dirty Harry in that movie series said to this one female cop and knowing these ninjas knowing these ninjas who are who seem you know the the thing that interests me so much about ninjas is for a group of people for a group of people right for a group of people who are pretty much at the bottom of the totem pole it's on the socioeconomic from a socioeconomic standpoint is it not interesting that these people always seem to have something to say they always seem to have some divinely inspired advice or a better forethought Rather than just admitting that this was a complete and utter fuck up. This is one of the reasons why it's so frustrating dealing with ninjas. And it's more than enough. It's more than enough to make you just throw up your hands and just say fuck it. And it, it just makes me wonder, well, in your divine wisdom... Why is it and how is it that so many of us black men who are sick and tired of this bullshit are going the passport bros route, the sex tourism route, and you can't shame us going overseas for sex tourism. Man, I hate to get on the tangent for a minute, but how are you going to shame somebody who ain't had no box or finds it very hard to get box because of the goofball society that he lives in 
he goes overseas somewhere where box is in abundance and and basically fornicates himself into an early grave on some sex tourism stuff provided he wants to do that whether he wants to do that or actually go over there and find quote unquote true love whatever the hell that is um, how you gonna shame him for that anyway back to the Ariana Preston situation because um, this is a this is a clear cut case of what Clint Eastwood's character in Dirty Harry was talking about now I'm gonna assume there ain't no feminists on my channel I'm gonna assume it ain't a whole lot of females who listen to my channel but uh, if they're assuming that they are um, this video probably ain't gonna be one that you're gonna like and that's fine because I'm not here for your approval I'm I'm here this is a facts channel facts based on statistical facts based on the day in and day out of what we see and what we experience that's what this is about this ain't about no feelings this ain't about no like no this is about as factual as the laws of biology the laws of physics So, I'm pretty sure we've all seen Dirty Harry, or at least, I forget exactly, because I know there's like, like four videos in the series, there's Magnum Force, I forget which ones, but I really do think that this is, this one was specifically Dirty Harry, because I think the very first one was Magnum Force, I think, don't quote me on that, and I think the second installment was Dirty Harry, where Clint Eastwood, playing this Dirty Harry, um, uh, is pretty much you know he's begrudgingly and involuntarily really participating in this um, this police interview for pretty much you know inspectors I don't think it was like uniform patrol I think it was specifically for like you know um, candidates who had been on the force obviously have some sort of experience on the force I mean many years experience so they send in this female candidate and um, I forget exactly what she specialized in uh, it was something to the effect it was something to the effect of like forensics or blueprints something to that effect and that you know she had been on the force for eight years and you know she was wearing a little you know pretty little uh, dress or skirt rather so he asked her okay well considering that you want this position as a um, as an inspector why don't you tell us you're experiencing um, your, your felony arrest to which she replies, I, I've never made any felony arrests. And, you know, being starstruck, Clint Eastwood's character says, okay, well, why don't you, then why don't you um, tell us your experience with misdemeanor arrests? You think you can, can you do that? To which she replies, I haven't made any misdemeanor arrest either. And that that's when that's when Dirty Harry just uh pretty much loses it. And there's this um there's this other lady, this older lady, who's basically, you know, cuz the whole thing is, you know, it's it's got hella feminine, I mean, feminism, excuse me. Feminism undertones to it, or really overtones really. Hella feminine, uh, I keep saying feminine, hella feminism overtones to it. And she's, you know, you know she's just like, oh, you're just saying all this, the car, because you, you're intentionally trying to make her fail. 
to which he's like yeah because if she fails out in the street she gets her ass blown off I would rather you know he didn't say this but he was pretty much like I'd rather her fail here than fail out there because if she fails out there she gets her ass blown off to which she retorted the candidate well it's my ass and uh, my hard luck. And then Dirty Harry pointed out, well, if you get killed, your partner gets killed too. So not only are you willing to lay your life on the line for your incompetence, you're willing to, but you're willing, I mean, and you know, that as honorable as that is, I mean, pretty foolish, foolhardy, especially considering it could be prevented either by you, you know, following certain procedures like backup or not or recognizing that the, you just ain't cut out for this position. You ain't cut out for this line of work and not even sign up for it at all. Or like I said, you follow the proper procedures and um, with making sure you have backup, making sure you do have a part in Ariana Preston's case. But what about your, I'm like, yeah, what about your, uh, yeah, as honorable as it is that you're willing to lay your life on the line for the force, you think it's honorable to be willing to lay your, um, your partner's life on the line? By which he won't be able to go back to his family, his wife, his kids. And you know, for a movie, for something that's supposedly Hollywood, it definitely details just how dangerous police work really is. And call me, call me sexist, call me misogynist, call me male chauvinist, call me them shits all day. I don't give a fuck. It's because of things like this. Not necessarily that movie, but what happened to her, as well as the things that I've personally experienced, because I've never been on the force, that I've just written off this whole notion of, um, now, if there's no getting around it, but working directly with but when it comes to working directly with women on the force I mean not on the force but on the job aside from HR aside from yeah like cuz like I said they're gonna be women on the job it's unavoidable like they're they're in HR they're your hiring managers there there's no getting around that but I mean as far as working directly with them I, I pretty much signed off on the idea so with that said with that said what that means is I'm not going to de deliberately sign up and work at a company that I know is filled to the brim with women I've had too much experience to uh to tell me that that's just not a good idea and damn what society says, damn what feminism says. And this is a tangent too, because this has nothing to do with what I'm ranting about. I'm just saying though, that right there is a prime example of what this society does on some, you know, women are just as equal and capable as men are type shit. It means we have to understand that we live in the West. And in the West, gender equality is the thing despite all of the biological evidence proving otherwise proving otherwise because to go back to dirty harry in the movie and yes it is a spoiler because the movie old as hell she signs up for the job and she's indeed working with dirty harry and in the end she ends up getting shot 
and I forgot exactly what it was but it was a very it was a very simple and honest mistake because like I said that kind of work I mean like I said uniform patrol would be and I can kind of sort of relate to that because I, I almost I too almost became a police officer but I know that don't count I know being almost a police officer don't count any more than any more than the other careers that the other career uh, paths that I almost um, became and pursued at best but it was if as far as I remember it was a simple and honest mistake that basically got a frag and the bad guy uh, ended up shooting her with an M16 or an AR-15 rifle. So this Ariana Preston situation with the thugs ambushing her from what I'm based off of what I'm being told. Forcing her to give up her service weapon. And then execute and probably executed her with her own weapon. And then the goons and then the goons trying to sell the weapon. It just tells me she ain't had no business being out there in the first place. And y'all already know what I'm gonna cross reference. You already know what kind of, I'm gonna cross reference. I'm gonna cross reference with my uh, former city of Memphis 10. Because as battle-hardened as those females think they are in Memphis. Them bitches ain't got, you bitches ain't got, these police, you police hoes, you ain't got without the aid of a man. You ain't got what it takes to deal with, to handle Pookie and you, you ain't got what it takes to handle Pookie and Ray Ray out there. And I don't care, like I said, even with all your training, even with all, because some of y'all, I, I remember there was one time, there was this, uh, I saw this one video once of this, um, it was a white female police officer too, from, ironically enough, from Chicago, um, tussling with this thug, and, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's doing some judo stuff with him, like, basically tying him up tying him up and grappling with him so I guess so he can't get no punches off and just lay her ass out mm. so she finally manages to subdue, subdue him and then the feet, uh, the male cops show up but this just shows you there was a reason why there was a reason why and to this day there still is a reason why well let me say this before I get ahead of myself there was a reason why back in the good old days all police officers were male the only females you saw in the department were working doing desk work and to this day to this day there's a reason why all soldiers are pretty much male you ain't gonna find too many I mean even with the uh even with the female Marine Corps, I mean, yeah, female uh, Marines, how many of them have actually seen combat? I mean, been out there fighting with fighting with the dudes. I know, I know they're out there. I know they're out there, but they're doing other shit. They're flying helicopters. They're, you know, they're. You know, they're, they're the sonographers, they're the nurses, they're, I mean, they, yeah, they out there, but are they fighting? Doing the heavy, the same heavy lifting that the dudes out there are doing. No, we know that. We know that. But it's just like this society, though. And society, I mean, it's a real disservice to you. You can get mad at me all you want. You need to be getting mad at um, the society that allows you females to get out here and do this kind of stuff in the first place. Because you really think you got what it takes to get out here and duke it with a dude. And this society has, 
bewitched you and has deceived you so much so that you think you can get out here and and rock it and tussle with a nigga. I mean, looking at the details of it, the fact that she got ambushed, the fact that she went out there with no kind of backup, and whether or not she called for it, I, I don't know. It speaks volumes to the nature of there are just some places you don't belong. It goes, it really goes back to, um, to I remember Tariq making a video long time ago saying the streets ain't just ain't in you the streets just ain't out there in you you can't be out you can't be out in the woods like Dudley do right thinking I'm gonna arrest the bad guys and you got wolves out you got apes out in the background and the apes is hungry the wolves is hungry here you are here you are, a highfalutin, think about it now, a shining example of black excellence, right? And I, and I, don't, say that, I don't say that in mockery, I say that to make a point, actually. She was a shining example in black excellence. She, she had been a police officer for I don't know how long, and she was just... Uh, less than a month away from graduating with her degree in um, criminal justice by which she would have been able to say that I've had experience as a police officer and now I get to move up th through the ranks as a lawyer and maybe even work her way sooner or later to be a judge you know kind of like uh, you know kind of like Judge Mathis She could have done that. I mean, that would have been a profile. That would have been a story. Because, again, I've considered that. I've considered a, a career in law enforcement where I would have worked my way up as a Memphis police officer. And, you know, having, that, having whatever level of IQ, because I don't know how high my IQ is. But um, having the level of IQ and the tenacity enough to go back to school, I would have, most likely, I would have pursued a degree in law while being on the beat. And I would have worked my way up. Um, eventually, petition, you know, contended for being a judge. I've, con I've considered this. And I was her age when I considered this. I mean, this was in my early 20s. Because they said she was 24. I was 21. Considering all this. Calling myself making a difference. Or trying to, anyway. And, you know, someone like that. Someone like that thinking that they got a chance against street street urban warfare battle hardened thugs like them Chicago goons you you didn't stand a chance. Not without no backup you didn't. You didn't stand a chance. Now, whether the issue was female authority, whether the issue, whatever the issue was. Because I submit to you that even if it was a nigga out there. I mean, they, they wouldn't have listened. To, in this case, they weren't going to listen to his ass either. And would have blew his ass off just as easily. Would have ambushed him. Would have told him to drop it off and give up his service weapon just as easy. And then executed his ass. But see, it probably would have been a little different. Because... It probably would have been a little different because depending on who that police officer was or is, he probably would have picked up signs. You probably would have seen some coming. He probably would have just even if he got even if he got killed, he would have went down blasting. 
He would have went out blasting. He would have been like, I'm going to get one. I may not get all you sons of bitches, but I'm going to get one of you sons of bitches. One of you motherfuckers coming to hell with me. One of you motherfuckers coming to the upper room with me. Hate to take hate to take that from uh, AC accountable commentary. <laughs> yeah, one of y'all coming to the pearly gates to see Saint John and Saint Peter with me. Cause y'all got me fucked up. It, it would have been a different story, unless of course it was some, like I said, some corn fed, highfalutin. You know, shining example of some real Batman character. And I can't even really, can't even say that. Some Harvey Dent character, really, before, you know, he turned Two-Face. Who was just a shining face of justice. And moral principles. Damn, it's four o'clock already. So yeah, I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut it from here. I think I've said everything I need to say. To make my point. I mean, I mean, my con my condolences, no doubt, do go to the young lady because, um, of course, it goes without saying she didn't deserve that. It's, it's tragic what happened to her considering the fact that she was just like I said less than a month away from you know graduating from that violent you know and, uh, and like I said of all the cities Chicago right shit Chicago I mean we just saw some um, goofy shit out of Chicago with a bat welding Karen that's why I'm early some places you just don't in this country you just don't go to you don't go to places like Chicago my mom was telling me about, uh, she was thinking about visiting Chicago one, and I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't going to Chicago. You know why I'm not coming, going to Chicago? She lucky I'm considering going back to visit Memphis. But do you know why I can't go to Chicago? You know why? Because I fit the description. Trust me. And for all, for all these ninjas out here who try to, uh, check the authenticity of my blackness or try to validate my blackness or the lack thereof trust me bro Tr bring your bring your melanated ass to chicago and see how white you really are see it yeah let's see how much of a white boy you are let's see how much of a white boy i am i bring my melanated ass to a place like chicago they ain't looking at none of that they ain't checking for no uh Valley girl accent or valley boy accent or whatever the hell. Because, you know, I've always been grilled on that because, you know, I never really exuded the, uh, the, the markings or the make, the machinations, if you will, of, you know, what it means to be a, you know, a thug ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it real out here in the streets, homie, you know what I'm talking about? And because of that, my blackness has been question at, be at best and invalidated at worst and I'm here to tell you I'm here to tell you motherfuckers ain't checking for your accent or the lack thereof you don't need all that to be and like I said in a place like Chicago like stepping in I already fit the description you fit the description just cause you there yeah just because you there So I'm like, hell no, I ain't going to no motherfucking Chicago. I wish I would. Seeing everything, I mean, we had, after all the experiences I had with motherfuckers from Chicago in Memphis, you think I would go to a place like that? Because damn near every experience that I had with the motherfuckers from Chicago was grimy and fucked up. I never said that about um, the L.A. niggas that I met in Memphis. The L.A. niggas was cool. Damn near every time. Damn near just about every time. Them L.A. niggas was cool. It was them Chicago niggas that I, we always had static with. I'm like, you, so in other words, you ain't no different than these Memphis ninjas. Because I don't, I don't like these Memphis ninjas either. But nigga, like, 
I gotta live here. I, I ain't gotta I ain't gotta go to Chicago. So you obviously a problem I can avoid. And avoid I will. But uh yeah man, it's it's fucked up, but it just proves that, you know, the streets the streets ain't in some people. You know, you up here getting up a badge and maybe you maybe you did grow up so maybe you think you think you relate to those people. And then they pull some shit like this. Nah, okay. Well, how relatable were you, really? I mean, what kind of rapport do you think you have with a bunch of savages raised in a single-parent household who have to do some of the grimiest of shit just to have a little bit of money in their pocket? Because you think they making any money slanging? Hell no. And even if they are, it ain't steady. It ain't it ain't steady money. It might be easy money, but it ain't steady money. The little success that some other Pookies and Ray Rays have doing that grimy shit that they do, it's not steady. It's not stable. So you, a career woman what business you got doing even being in that kind of environment is beyond me it's beyond me because I submit you you ain't got no business being over there over with them any more than any business you got I mean there's a reason why we live in civilizations and then we ain't out in the and we ain't in the wilderness with the fucking wolves and bears and shit there's a reason for that yeah there's a reason why we ain't got wolves and like I said and wild ass animals you know, just out and about in the, uh, you know, wildlife just moving about living among us. Like the squirrel. Now, we, yeah, we live amongst squirrels and birds because they ain't a threat. But we ain't out here living with lions, tigers, and bears because those are a threat. Motherfuckers will eat our motherfucking ass. So, likewise, you know, you building. You building a career off of arresting Pookies and Ray Rays, especially in a place like Chicago, yeah, you are building a foundation on sinking sand. And something like this, as fucked up as it is, can indeed happen to you. And I like to think, even though it's been a long while since I considered becoming a police officer, I like to think that that was what I was looking at. That was my reality. And, you know, in me considering a career in law enforcement that my number one priority which was one of the main reasons why my number one priority um, as I was told by um, several police officers was to get make it home make it home and over the course since I reneged on that um, path on in law enforcement I've seen several over the course since then I've seen several Memphis police officers specifically who didn't make it home I forget their names but I remember there was this um there was this white boy uh, back in 2015 they did a sea of blue for him because he got killed over on Cottonwood doing a, like I said, a random traffic stop over where I used to live and it was like right over where I used to live at Cottonwood Apartments and then there was this uh, there was this black woman who again was trying to uh, duke it out with two goons I mean very, very similar story very similar story And, you know, she got her little service pistol and the, and the goons got, I mean, the goons got whatever it is they got. They got choppers. 
Because I don't know what kind of heat they pack in Chicago. I just assume for the most part they just pack pistols. Because they're convenient. They're, um, but, you know, in my town, motherfuckers be packing Drake. I mean, all kinds of automatics. It's, it's low-key almost like Florida. Almost. Because, you know, in Florida, they say, I mean, they, they ain't even packing no little little pistols, little pea shooters. They, they say all they got is automatics out there. But, you know, in Memphis, anything goes. It can be a semi-automatic or automatic. It'll be a Draco. Like an AK pistol. Yeah, she got into it with the um the goons, and the goons ended up. I'm like, yeah, cause they goon. They do this for a living. They like, I don't know how much time y'all spend on the gun range, but you do realize that these goons shoot each other, shoot at each other. So they already have the stimuli, the you know, to pop a buck in your ass. Versus a police officer who, I mean. I don't care how experienced that police officer is. It ain't every day a police officer out here blowing somebody ass off. It ain't, and you know, from my experience, from what I've been told, it ain't, you know, a lot of police officers don't even spend a whole lot of time on the, um, the gun range. Even though they should. Had I become a police officer, I would, I would have stayed on the gun range. Because when I, um, when I get my stuff in order, when I get my vehicle, I already got to get so when I get my vehicle and get my license to carry, what do you think I'm going to be doing? I'm, even as a uh, civilian, somebody who's not a police officer, I'm going to be on the gun range. Because I'm like, I'm getting this right. I'm getting this right. I don't care if I got to take classes. I don't care if I got to. we we going to figure this out. I don't care if I have to uh, participate in those uh, shooting tournaments that they be doing you know basically becoming a fire marshal bill because fire marshal bill I mean those are the people who qualify as police officers if you ask me people who are just going in it for the career for the uh the sake of having experience under their belt and you know doing it because doing it other than for the sake of fighting crime and fighting some of the most dangerous criminals out there like you like you you setting them up to get killed you really are you you are what I like to call it you're arming them halfway you're sending them out it's like you're sending them out to a war and you're arming them with half the ammunition that the enemy has why would you do that? You know, I can't speak on police work, but you know, one of the foundations of my training as a martial artist is having all the tools necessary for the streets. Not the ring, not the cage, the streets. My whole premise in all my martial arts training, everything that I've studied over the years, over these 25 years that I've run through Taekwondo, uh, Tai Jitsu, the Screamer, C-Lot, Muay Thai, MMA, BJJ, wrestling, catch wrestling, was all for figuring out how translatable is that when it comes to the streets. And how much of what do I need so that I can get out there and make it do what it do. And that's just melee weapons. That's just hands, feet, knives, sticks. We ain't even talking about guns. Because I don't have a license to carry. So with that, I mean, when it comes to that, I'm pretty much fucked. That, that potentially includes dog attacks. Because the streets ain't fair. I mean, the streets ain't fair. And this should be prime example. Because they probably, they probably ran up on her from four corners. So that even if she did bust on one of them, she got three, 
more she gotta worry about busting the, I mean you know it's 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 fucked up because yeah and it, it mean what fucks me up is I'm just thinking of the fact that y'all sending y'all sending police officers out there thinking you know like us like I said on some Dudley do right shit or all they have to do is flash their badge and say stop in the name of the law I am a police officer I'm an officer of the Chicago Police Department stop in the name of the law and you know I, I know Chicago cops are well I think Chicago cops are gutter. I know Memphis cops are gutter. Cause yeah, Memphis cops don't play. They'll blow your ass off. And I mean, they're and you know, strangely enough, I honestly think it's the Denver cops here that'll blow your ass off quicker than the Memphis cops. The I mean, I I gotta hand I gotta hand it to the Memphis cops. They actually they actually have a level a good pretty good level of restraint. These these col goofy ass Colorado cops since I've been out here, bruh. There was just a video that went viral about um this goofy ass cop. I don't know if it was in Denver or on the outskirts of Denver, but it was definitely in Colorado where there was this goofy ass cop. So first he tells him to stop. No no, he tells him to go. Then he tells him to stop, and then he arrests him for not stopping. Even though he told him to go, he made a contra what we call a contradictory uh, command, and then draws the gun on him. 